Did you know that in the English versions of the Old Testament, there are over 300,000 more words used than in the ancient original Hebrew text? It's true. The English translators used over 31% more words than are in the Hebrew text. There are 2,193 less unique words in Hebrew than what the translators used in English. But why do the translators use far more English words than what the original Hebrew text has in it? English is a Western language that's built to explain truth with the use of precise words and definitions. In ancient Hebrew, there are only about 8,200 8, unique words used in the biblical text. But if you try to compare that with modern English, there are over 170,000 unique words that are currently in use. But English has a word for everything. In the Western world, these words are used to try to create a precise word that exactly matches what concept we're trying to portray. This is why the English translators had to use far more unique words than what was in the original Hebrew text. They are trying to precisely define the Hebrew text to match their interpretations of the Hebrew words. But is this a proper way to understand the original Hebrew text? Is this concept of understanding truth how the original authors were writing in these ancient books of the Bible? The Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew thousands of years ago in an Eastern language to an Eastern people in an Eastern way of thinking. A language from an ancient time where truth is not transmitted by apologetics, definitions, or detailed theology, but passed on by the use of stories, poetry, parables, and impactful sayings. A language where words are meant to have deep truth and layer upon layer filled with meanings. Hebrew words have complex and deep nuanced meanings, so they were able to create complex stories with multiple emphasis. Here's an example. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, it says that God walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. Cool in Hebrew is the word ruach. Ruach has a complex and full depth of meaning. It is used almost 400 times in the Hebrew text and can be translated into English words such as spirit, breath, breeze, wind, blast, cool, in about 10 other ways. So when God walks with Adam and Eve in the garden, the Hebrew word can mean that God walks with them in the breeze of the day or the breath of the day. If we begin to understand that God walks with man as spirit or breath or wind, we see this concept show up all through the biblical text. When you read Isaiah 55 and it says, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, words carried by breath, ruach. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what I purpose, for you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace, and the mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Why are the trees clapping their hands? See, the, the Ruach of God has passed through them. The breath of God has blown through. And why wouldn't they rejoice? Every time I see the leaves clapping in the wind, I'm reminding that God still walks with man, just as it says that he walked with Adam and Eve in the breeze of the day. But by only studying the English text, we can overlook the wealth of meaning that the original authors intended. But by pursuing these original languages and covering the ancient words, a beautiful mosaic of understanding occurs and the Bible can spring to life like never before.